In this video, we will set up Devise in our Ruby on Rails application, and we'll look at how we can extend it to include additional fields in the database table. So let's begin by looking at the Devise GitHub page. And if we scroll down, we can see that we need to do certain things in order to install Devise. So the first thing we need to do is include the gem within our gem file. So we can copy this text, gem device, and we will open up our gem file in our application. And we can scroll down a bit and we will paste this in. So now we'll need to run the bundle install command in our terminal. And this will install the device gem if you have not already got it installed. So now let's look back at the documentation. And the next thing we need to do is run this rails generate device install command. So this will create a configuration file for us. And you can also see here that there is a file it creates under the config locales directory. And directly underneath this, we can see some basic instructions on how to get the device gem up and running within our application. So one of the first things we need to do is copy this line of text, this configuration, and we place it within the config environments folder. So that goes under the development environment. So let's open that up and we'll find an appropriate place to paste this in. So we're looking for the action mailer and we have this action mailer perform caching, so we can paste that directly under this. And then the next step is to set a default path for your application. So if you already have your application set up, then you probably have that root path already set. So that is your home page route, and most likely you have that set already. Then the final two things here is you can include these notifications on your application layout, but I'm gonna skip that for now. And the one thing I recommend that you do use, however, is the Rails generate device views. So this allows us to modify the sign in page and the sign up page, and we can include additional fields there, change the styling of the layouts, and it's just really good to have those views for device. So I recommend doing that. And once again, we will go back to the documentation. So this is the point where we will generate our device model. So we run this command rails generate device, and then we include our model name. So in this case, I'm going to call our model account. So we start with a capital letter for account. And you can call it user or some other different name here. So this will generate a migration file and a model file. So these are the two most important parts along with the additional route that gets added. Um, but we also have some test unit files that are generated by default. So now let's go and look at our migration file. So if we open up the DB folder, and in here we'll have a migrate folder, and then we will find the migration file that was created by device. So what we're going to do here is add a couple of additional fields. But before we do that, let's look at some other parts of this file. So we have this trackable section and these are just commented out, but if you want to include some of these abilities within device, you can simply uncomment these. And the confirmable section, for example, will allow you to uh, confirm accounts before they can log in. So they must confirm that email. And then you have a lockable section which allows failed login attempts and the ability to block accounts that have many failed attempts to log in. So we'll add a couple of additional fields to this device table. So let's first begin by adding a first name. So we'll add that as a string and we'll ensure that this does not accept a null value in this case. And we can even set a default value of a blank string. And then we will do the same for the last name. So let's just modify the name of the second column. And the next thing we need to do then is to run the Rails DB migration. So we run the command Rails DB migrate, and this will create the table for us and update our schema file. So now if we go back to our schema file within our application, 
we should see now that we've got this new table. So we've got the device table, and you can see at the top that we have the first name and the last name within this table. There are a couple more steps that we need to complete in order to get this working. And the first of which is adding some code to the application controller. And we need to add some code to permit the additional fields that we are adding. So in our application controller, we will allow device to send two additional values. So we'll paste this code into our controller and we'll remove this address attributes because we don't need that in our application. So we just want to add the first name and the last name. And you could add additional fields here if you wanted to store all our information. So this only gets called if it is a device controller. So this will be called on the sign up page. So then within our views, we open up the device folder and we'll go to the registrations folder and open the new file. So this is our sign up page and we'll need to add two additional fields to this form. So let's copy and paste the email field and we'll change this to first name. And in this case we can keep the autofocus as this will be the first field in the form but we'll remove it from the email field and then we'll change the first name to be a text field. and we'll remove that autocomplete. So this will be our first entry field, and then we will copy that and set up a last name field. And we can remove the autofocus on this one. So if we open up the sign up page, you can see that we have two new fields here ready to go. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys have found this helpful and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Ruby on Rails videos.